my name is Natalia. I am in Ms. Harvey's second period. And my topic is why is depression overlooked? Um, August 16, 2012, I was lying in my mother's long hand arms crying. I closed my eyes and fell asleep as she ran her fingers through my hair and her tears ran down my red cheeks. The next morning, I woke up and went to my therapist, and before you know it, I was signing papers and what would be my home for the next seven days. I put on my blue scrubs and walked into a room where eight kids sat around a large circular wooden table. A tall, white lady with blue eyes and long brown hair asked me to introduce myself and why I am here. My name is Natalia, and I am here for depression and attempt suicide. We went around the room one by one. I see people and they tell me to kill others. If I say no, they whisper in my ear and threaten to kill me, she says. I was evicted from my home. My family and I have been living on the streets for the past three months, he says. I get beat up every day because I'm gay, he says. I choked my grandma with a telephone cord. I could not control myself. He says, I am crazy, she says. We are all crazy. We are in a place where our clothes is hidden from us. Bathroom stalls do not lock. Belts and strings are not allowed the mental hospital. We are often called crazy, but it is not us. It is the four different pills we take every day. It is the creep feelings that crawl within our souls and take control. It is the hopelessness that overcomes us. I tried not to, be, not to kill myself, but to be the murderer of the pain within me. This poem um, is called The Search, and I wrote it last year when, after being hospitalized a week before we started our junior year. Um, and by this point, I have been diagnosed with depression for five years. I've taken um, different medications, Lexapro, Selexa. Um, and I've, been, I've grown really, really passionate about depression and helping and figuring out why depression exists. Um, and with my experiences, I've been to a lot of group therapy programs. I've done, I've had plenty of therapists. Um, and I've met so many people who are diagnosed with depression, and I've heard so many stories of them being mistreated, and people not understanding what they're going through, and just looking down on them because they're diagnosed with depression. Um, and I started to question why depression is so overlooked. And I know a lot of people who show symptoms of depression, but since they're not aware, they don't reach out for help. And that's what I was trying to solve in my research project. Um, and I believe that it's due to the misunderstanding of depression and that society is blind to the seriousness of depression. Um, and people are not well informed. My whole project began in a form of anger. I was just angry that people didn't understand, people didn't try to care. Next slide. Um, so I have some facts for you guys. 17.5 million Americans are affected by some form of depression and 9.2 million of them have major clinical depression. And two thirds of those people suffering from depression are not seeking the necessary treatment. And 80% of the people with clinical depression who are receiving the, clin um, the correct treatment are their lives significantly, significantly improve. And women um, experience depression about two times more than men. Next slide. Um, so, during my research, I found a lot of myths and misconceptions about depression. Um, so the main six that I came across were, depression is rare and it will not happen to me. It doesn't matter what sex, race, and color, anything you are, um, depression can happen to anyone. Um, depression is about feeling sad. It is so much more than that. People feel that, hey, I failed a test, I'm depressed. That's, that's you just feel sad, you're not depressed. Um, and depression has a lot of physical symptoms. Um, another misconception is that depression is a sign of weakness. Depression is just as serious as things like diabetes and asthma. It doesn't mean that you're a weak person and that you, it, it happens to everybody. Um, depression is temporary or will go, by, go away by itself. If you don't get help and if you just think, hey, it'll, I'll just pass, it's just a phase, it'll just get worse. Um, de depression cannot be treated. There are a lot of different ways to treat uh, depression. 
Another misconception is that it can only be treated by medication. That's not true. There are therapy sessions. There are a lot of different forms um, to be treated, and everybody is an individual. So once you start getting help, they'll find a way to individualize your treatment. Next slide. Um, and the symptoms of depression. Um, it includes feelings of helplessness and hopelessness, the loss of interest in daily activity, sleep changes, anger or irritability, loss of energy, self-loathing, uh, reckless behavior, concentration problems, and unexplained acne and pains. Um, so for my solution, I feel that obviously we can't fix depression. It's gonna happen and it's gonna continue been here for a long time. And I feel that there are so many groups that are trying to raise awareness, but unfortunately, they're doing it in the wrong places. Great, they have people standing outside asking you, hey, do you have a moment for dep the depression awareness? Most people just walk away, don't even say no. Um, and I feel like if we integrate uh, mental health awareness inside of schools, it'll help a lot. And not looking at it in the way of, hey, this is depression, this is when you feel this way. More teaching the form of happiness. If you guys saw the um, TED Talk of that little boy who was homeschooled and just, he was cool. Um, if you teach different, form, different ways to cope with challenges and things that, mishaps that might happen, that can help you when you feel down and when you're feeling depressed, help you with coping skills. It's not gonna make you not feel depressed, but it, it will help. And also, if we start teaching these symptoms and letting these children know at a young age, it'll help get parents more involved. So when parents are more involved, they can see, hey, my child is showing a lot of symptoms, they might have it, and helping them get help, going to see a therapist. And I feel like if we do this in schools, I felt like it'd be best to do it um, tied in with physical education because uh, physical education and depression are very um, tied together. So there are a lot of um, researchers that have found that if you are depressed or if you have any mental health, it can affect your physical health um, immensely. So if you, you have a higher chance of getting um, diabetes or getting sick physically because of depression. So if we integrate this into classrooms, it allows to not help just have less people going untreated with depression, but also to be healthier physically. 